Oh, coffee. I love you. And and um Well, look back there is my bag full of weaving ends. I give those to somebody at my local yarn store. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish and this is Luther. If we haven't met, <laughs> if we have met, welcome back. I have kind of a sad story to tell you guys before we get started. Um, I lost a couple of days ago about 130 files of video and pictures saved up for future videos. Um, it was through a mistake of my own and uh, it's been kind of poopy. But you know what? Life is like that sometimes. It was my own fault. I still have my best buddy and we're just gonna go from here. I can't do anything else. The really bad thing is I had one committed video that I could not finish. I'm doing everything I can to make it right. Today I'm gonna weave some dishcloths. A couple of you have been waiting for dishcloths and dish towels. Dishcloths are first. And I'm gonna show you the last batch. These have been used for more than a year and I think it's time for some new ones, even though like they're wearing really well. I'm not gonna to toss these out or anything, but I do feel like they're getting faded. I find myself reaching for these first all the time. So that's what I want again. And I wanted to give you some specs before I start warping my loom. So I used for these only sugar and cream. I buy the cones, but you can also buy that in them in the little balls. Pretty much anywhere. They have them at lots of Big box stores, they have them online at a bunch of like the bigger box yarn stores like Mary Maxim and places like that. <laughs> and today I'm also gonna use some Knitting Fever painted cotton. I got some, I wanted to add a pop of coral to some of these and coral for some reason is my favorite color. I don't know right now, I kinda go in cycles and I'm in love with coral right now. So, um, I, the only place I know for sure you can buy that is at my local yarn store. They are shipping during the pandemic and they are amazing people and they give really great service. So if you think you might want to try some of that, it's very similar to the sugar and cream. And I have a dishcloth that I um, knitted out of it that I think is wearing better. So that's just my two cents on that. I will link their shop below. The rest of the specs, that's the yarns I'm using today. And then um, they are in a 7.5 dent heddle and they are 106 ends. And then also I'll talk through a little bit the finishing. I'll actually talk to you about it because I've never seen anyone finish them this way and that's why I didn't make a video the first time because I was like, I'm trying this. I'm gonna see how it washes. I'm gonna see how it wears and I love it. So I'm gonna show you up close and I've washed these at least once a week because I'm weird and I change my dishcloth more than once a day. I feel like there's like gross things growing in my dishcloths. Really? And I also want to put some in, a camp in the camper because I have faith that we are going to get to go camping someday. So I think I'm going to do about a seven foot warp. That should give me roughly six dishcloths. I just don't want to go crazy and I want to be able to get these done in about a day. So I'm going to start warping. Oh, also I need to mention, I am going to use the warping bar that we designed. We have made a couple of improvements and found a local supplier that will make them for us. So I guess contact me the uh email my email is in the box below but it's never ending knit night at gmail.com if you think you'd like to pre-order we are getting a pre-order together so let's get started
Okay, so you guys can see I squeezed out every little last inch of warp I possibly could. Um, I'm guessing that's eight inches maybe that are left. And then I had a little at the beginning. I might have been a tiny bit short, but it won't be much. And this last dishcloth is gonna be one side waffle, one side plain, because it's just easier to um, weave the plain when the warp gets real short like that. So, but that's kind of cool. Okay, so before I cut these apart, this is my long, long string of dishcloths. Before I cut these apart, I'm gonna zigzag over each hem stitch to just like lock it all together because I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna basically leave fringe, but I'm gonna cut it really, really short. And I have done this before, it washes fine, it stays fine. I will back up a little bit on each end. You'll see, so I'm gonna put my machine on zigzag, which is three. And then I'm gonna make it a kind of shorter stitch cause um, I'm gonna do just a little bit over a two. And then I'm gonna be using my famous don't touch scissors. If you sew at all, you probably have a don't touch scissors. I'm allowed to touch them though. So I'm just gonna start at one end. and I have my machine threaded with white, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the white because even if I do the coral, it's gonna like bloom in the wash and kind of just disappear and like bloom right over it. So I'm just gonna zigzag these. one. I'm just going to go through each of those hem stitches and do the same thing and then I'm going to throw these in the wash. Okay so I have all these um, zigzag over the hems and I'm just going to trim them really close all along the hem. I am leaving the tiniest little bit of fringe but only because once you wash it and everything, it just kind of like puffs up and turns into, I don't know, just fluff on the edge. But I like it that way. And I did this almost a year ago. I said that before. I've never seen anyone else do it. And um, I'm sure there probably is someone who is doing it, but I've never seen it. So I just did it and wash the towels and or I mean the dishcloths and use them for all this time because I thought well this way I'll know if this is really going to hold it in but locking it in with the sewing machine um zigzag stitch over it oh there's my pin I've been looking for um, really seemed to hold perfectly well I have had not one problem and I think I made five the first time maybe six and they've been washed a ton I use them they're in fact they're my favorites and um not one has like had anything come loose or pull free or anything so I'm not worried about that at all as soon as I finish this up I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in the washing machine and the dryer and then when they come out I will probably um, just trim the ends I'm gonna weave in just a couple ends first that I don't 
want to clip off too short and then I will be back to show them to you. I'm super excited. I love how these turned out. They're done. Check these out. And I just wanted to quickly go over maybe something I would have done different, blah, 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 blah. So my current favorite thing with weaving is to weave with multicolored yarns that are maybe even crazy. Excuse me. Let those, let all those colors and like the wild yarns do all the work because, and, and pretty much plain weave mostly. I just, right now I'm not drawn to like all the different hook lace patterns and I'm just not drawn to that stuff right now. I really like using wild wild yarns that I think would not look that pretty knitted or crocheted and weave them and all of a sudden they're like a masterpiece. So that's kind of right now my thing. Now check me in two weeks. Maybe I'll tell you hook lace is my favorite thing. Maybe I will be weaving triple clasp weft. I don't know. As I said, normally right now, and especially for these dishcloths, because I've done these before and I like the weight of this, to me it's like perfect for a dishcloth, but we all have different preferences, right? I thought I would try doing a waffle weave and um, I used the coral alone. I just wanted to try one. I'm gonna use it for a while and see, because I think like, what if I like this better? And all this time I've been thinking, no, these are perfect and I actually like this better. But I only made one this way and I do love how it looks. It's like so Caribbean looking. I just love how that looks. But that's kind of like the more red coral you can see on there. And then on the next one, I knew I was gonna have to really squeeze out that last one. So I started still with the waffle because I still had the pickup stick in. And then as I got closer to the top of the warp, I was realizing that it's just a lot harder to manipulate a pickup stick when you get close to the back end of your warp. So I took it out, I wove the rest plain. So this is almost like half and half. It's waffle at the bottom and then the top is clean woven. This is what I would have done differently. I would not have done this. You can tell when you really, if I hold this up, there is a lot more shrinkage in the waffle part. And you can actually tell, like if you hold these up next to each other, I can't really do it because I don't have enough arms, but um, that the, the waffle weave just did shrink a lot more. So I guess keep that in mind if you want to try this, but I love these and let me tell you, that I'm envisioning doing a couple more sets of these because we always, oh, our kids are grown. Our youngest is about to turn 22 and our oldest is 36. Well, he'll be 36 in July. So like our kids are at that age where they're like buying houses and their friends are buying houses and they're maybe pairing up, getting married, moving in together, all those things. And I think a set of these for your new house, like all six, obviously, let me just make this, give you the full effect. A set of these for your new kitchen. Oops. Using all the same colors, but like changing up how, you know, they're put together. That's one of the things that I really like doing with weaving a lot, but putting this, with like a cute little glass pitcher full of lemons, a wooden spoon and a lemonade recipe. Wouldn't that be like the cutest housewarming present? I feel like it would be adorable and who would not love that? Freaks, that's who. So um, that's the plan. I think I am going to do a couple more sets of these and you guys, I know I'm a real weaver and let me tell you how I know. I have never made notes on a project because I was not in love with weaving up until pretty recently. I just kept hanging in there, I guess. And I have learned over the years that while you're in a learning curve for a new skill or a new craft, a lot of times it doesn't feel as fun as the things that you're very proficient at, which totally makes sense. 
because you feel like you don't know what you're doing and things are harder than they will be once you really know what you're doing and all that stuff. So now that I feel more like I really love weaving, um, I started a weaving notebook with notes on my projects, which I've literally never done. And I'm so excited. This is the first project that went in my notebook and I am so in love with these. I just think they are adorable. I'll be back soon with that project update. I hope you guys all stay well and I will see you soon. Bye.